All right. We are ready. Awesome. I'm Chris Johnson. I'm the Director of Communications for the Fuller Center for Housing International. And I'm here with Jen Downing and eight, eight, other, oh, eight students from Wittenberg yes. University in Springfield, Ohio, who are spending their spring break working with us here, also in Macon, in Atlanta, and Albany. Uh, it's become a tradition. So, uh, and Jen is a, not only a repeat worker here in Perry, but this is the third straight year she's done it. So, are you just a glutton for punishment or what? <laughs> no, um, I really love being able to help people, um, and like it's really fulfilling being able to do all of this. Um, and especially with Perry, my first time coming, um, I got to go back afterwards, like back to school, and I heard everyone and how much fun they had with each other, but they never really talked about like the people they met there, and I felt that I had made like really great relationships with people here, and like I had a really great time, so I just really wanted to come back and like just meet the people again and see them again, and it was really great, so. Have you become an expert roofer now? Oh, I have, I think so. <laughs> I We fill out a little questionnaire, and I put professional roofer, very skilled <laughs> on all of them. And so far, the, uh, we have a few newcomers here. What do they think of, of the work? They're just getting started. Uh, you embrace them for the uh, long week to come here? I have. <laughs> I've told them a little bit. Um, and they're super excited. A few were a little hesitant to get on the roof, but now they're all super happy to get on the roof and super excited for the work. Now, what do you think uh, you, you take out of this in the long term, you know, as you go forward, moving into adulthood here? Yes. Um, there's definitely those connections that you make, like, all around, so I know that, like, in Perry, Georgia, I always have these friends and, like, relationships to, like, say hi to and all of that stuff. Um, also just being able to see what work you can do and see the end product and see that you can help so many people by just having a week of work and, like, helping a whole group. Um, so just seeing that just even the littlest of things can help a lot of people. All right, well, I'm going to let you get back to work before my dad, who's heading up this project, gets mad. <laughs> so thank you very much yes. for joining us. Thank you. Okay, well, I told you we also had a group in Macon. Um, they're all, they're in Macon, they're also, Wittenberg has teamed up with some students from James Madison University, who also come down regularly to work in Macon. Um, but speaking of Macon, uh, two weeks ago, they had a team of 27 adults, an adult group from St. Peter's United Church of Christ in Elkhurst, Illinois. And we got some photos of them um, on Facebook. We got a story with one of the members, um, a Faith in Action story. He tells about why they do this kind of work. Um, they were down two weeks ago in Macon, and they had temperatures in the low 80s all week. These kids, it's, it's upper 50s right now, so it's, it's almost Ohio-like for these folks. Um, now, in Indianapolis, we heard from Chuck Boyd up there, and they are getting ready to, in 2015, they built a home Right in the shadows, kind of a Lucas Oil Stadium, which is where the Indianapolis Colts play. Well, they're, they've now been given two lots on the same street, and they're going to be able to build two houses there in partnership with Mount Pleasant Chris, Christian Church. They're going to do that in May, and the church is fully funding this build. And if you remember, Indianapolis was the host of our Little Bit Legacy build last year. Now, two years ago, in 2016, the host of the Legacy build was the Chattahoochee Fuller Center Project in Valley, Alabama. And sure enough, they've started their 39th new home um, last week, and it is also in Valley, Alabama. Um, it's the first of four they're building this year, and later this month, they'll host a block of blessings with Point University in West Point, uh, Georgia, Lynette area there. Um, and they're gonna have about 400 students involved in this block of blessings where they'll just handle like street after street, a sprucing up um, yards, they'll do some debris clean up, they'll do some painting, um, minor repairs, things like that. So this is a tremendous opportunity we have to work with Point University. We're very thankful for what they do up there. And, and Kim Roberts is just showing tremendous leadership there. Now, internationally, you may have heard uh, they had a terrible earthquake in uh, Papua New Guinea, which is one of our newest uh, international partners, one of our newest global builders destinations. We did hear from our folks there. Um, they were not impacted by the quake, so our work will continue there as usual. So no concerns there. Uh, another area of concern has been uh, South Africa with the water situation in Cape Town. Um, it's one of our newest global, build it is our very newest global builders destination in South Africa. Uh, we're monitoring the situation, but as of now, 
Uh, they still need us to come in and help, and as long as we're helpful and not uh, interfering with uh, any other water problems, we'll go help. So right now the situation, it, is, it seems to be slightly improved. They got a little bit of rain. Uh, we hope it keeps getting better, and we hope we continue to send teams uh, to work there. Now, uh, a lot of international stuff. Uh, Zidon Kolke from Peru, we talked about legacy builds. He, uh, Peru hosted the half of the Miller Fuller Legacy Build in 2012. Well, Zanon was up a couple weeks ago, um, and I had a chance to sit down with him in our America's office. Um, <clears throat> very rare to see uh, Zanon here, so we took the opportunity to talk to him. Have a great conversation there. Go to our website, it's right in the center of the website, and kind of uh, hear what Zanon has to say about the great work going down there. Um, uh, perhaps our most thriving operation at the moment is down in El Salvador. Um, We've had a couple of tremendous building years in Nuevo Cascatlan and Huachapan. A couple of hunter homes um, built there in the last couple of years. Well, this year we're likely to have at least 200 more uh, between the two sites. And by the fall, we, we expect to be starting on another 55 or so on another plot of land. Um, but we need your help to make it happen. There's a little bit of infrastructure that goes into making these whole communities possible. but. Uh, Go to our website, go to Facebook, you'll see these thriving communities. Uh, and if you're on our mailing list, you're probably going to get a letter here soon or a newsletter next month where we'll explain a little bit more about what's going on in El Salvador. These are thriving operations. And you make it happen, and we can't do it without you. But with your help, we're able to not just build homes down there, but entire communities right there together. And these are people who are living in terrible, terrible conditions. They're in great shape now. And it's all thanks to you, so we hope you continue to support us. Uh, and finally, internationally, uh, we're having some great discussions with some folks down in Puerto Rico. Uh, we told you way back after the Hurricane Maria that uh, we weren't going to get in the way of the immediate disaster relief, but we're, we're ready to move into long-term recovery, and, and it's been very slow getting power and things uh, restored down there to where we can work. But uh, Ryan Ipiola went there, our Director of International Field Operations, he went there last month, I believe it was, had some great discussions with some groups there so we're hopeful that it won't be long before we have a partner with whom we can work through and send teams um, they're still they're learning about what we do how we operate uh, I think sometimes folks find it hard there's no catch that we just want to send people in to help and we have so many people um, who are watching this video right now so many people who support us who keep calling and asking when can I go to Puerto Rico when can I go to Puerto Rico well <laughs> we hope we can give you some times very soon now don't forget, we just talked about legacy builds um, and, and other volunteer opportunities. One volunteer opportunity that is uh, ongoing all the time is our disaster rebuilders. Uh, been very busy down in East Texas and in Louisiana, which is still dealing with after, ex after effects of floods two years ago. Um, we want to thank you for all, all you volunteers who have signed up and go down there with us. You're restoring hope as much as you are homes there. and. And also, in addition to our disaster rebuilders, the other ongoing volunteer opportunities we have are global, global builders programs going to many different countries. I told you about a few of the newer ones. And uh, it looks like it's heading for another record year of participation. And we have U.S. builder trips. Um, this is technically a U.S. builders trip. Uh, it's all college students, but it also could be groups uh, like we had in Macon a couple weeks ago. It could be adults, church groups, uh, any kind of group. Uh, so, Go to our website, look up U.S. Builders and Global Builders Opportunities. And don't forget about the Miller Fuller Legacy Build. It's coming to America's Georgia for the first time in April. That'll be April 15th through the 20th. It'll be followed by our annual conference on the 20th and 21st. And on the 20th, that Friday, both of these two events are going to unite. And we'll have the, self, the house dedications that Friday. We'll all be able to come together. It's going to be kind of like a reunion and a celebration uh, as much as a conference and a build on, on that Friday anyway. So go to our website, it's easy to sign up for. Um, sign up quick so you can get the best hotel rates and that sort of thing. There are also uh, volunteer lodging accommodations. Now, and if you go to our website, fullercenter.org, at the top there's a web slide uh, talking about faith in action. And we have a survey where we're wanting to hear from people whose faith has been enhanced or restored by working with the Fuller Center, we want to hear your stories, and we've got many great stories, and we've got several outstanding stories that we've shared on the website from Christians, but we've, we've also got, uh, we've had a, a submission from a Jewish woman 
who documented our work in Indianapolis. We even have one from an atheist who tells why he supports this Christian ministry, which is great that that it touches everyone. You know, you know I've always said that uh, it's always amazed me that with the Fuller Center, and I've been here seven years almost, that I've never seen an organization where so many people from the left and the right, so many people who are religious and not coming together under one big tent for a common cause. There's just so few places right now where everybody can come together in that way. You know, and it's because no one is against helping people help themselves. And that's the very essence of how we operate. And that's exactly what we do. Now, again, uh, thanks for supporting this important work. Uh, be sure to keep following us on Facebook and Twitter. And go to our website, sign up for our emails. We won't flood your email box, I promise. Uh, you might get a couple of months. You'll get volunteer and support opportunities. And in the meantime, uh, just keep, keep, uh, keep the faith. We're doing great work, and it's all thanks to you, so please keep supporting us. And until next month, oh yeah.